Guess what, guys? The playdate is finally here. Well, at least almost finally here. This is a developer unit that I've been selected for, and I am ready to start showing you guys how to program some things on this awesome little game console. I thought I'd start by showing you what's in the box. Now, this is the developer preview, so its box will be a little different, but the contents of it will be pretty much the same as the final product. First up, we have a USB Type-A to USB Type-C cable. This will act as your main power cable and your data transfer cable. Then, the only other thing that's in the box, or that was at least in my box, is the Playdate unit itself. Luckily, this is all we need to get started. Looking at the unit itself, you'll notice that it is a nice, friendly, bright yellow. Flipping it around to the bottom, you'll notice that it has a headphone input, a USB Type-C, and also a speaker. Looking at the input buttons, we can see that it has the directional pad, AB buttons, and a creative crank input. Alright, let's get to the coding. Before we start coding, we're actually going to need to install the SDK software for the Playdate. I won't go into detail of where to download it from, because it will change by the time the public version is available, but this is what the install process should look like for you too. When it's done, you'll notice that it installed to this file location. Obviously, instead of Rhett Thompson, yours will be your username. In case you're unfamiliar with how to navigate there, I'd like to show you a quick way that I find helpful. Start in your Documents folder, and then press the Command and Up arrow keys to go to the Above folder. And then, it's right there under Developer, and then Playdate SDK. One more quick tip. From this folder, let's go back and right-click on the Playdate SDK. Let's make an alias so it's easy to get back to this folder next time. From here, let's just drag it onto our desktop, perhaps, and you'll see that when we click on it, it should open back up our SDK folder. Now let's explore some of the files in here. You'll notice that these two files, Inside Playdate and Inside Playdate with C, both of them are HTML files that are a good documentation and overview of everything inside of the main programming SDK. As you can see by what's displayed here, it has a bunch of built-in functions to help us with pretty much any type of game we think we could want to create. Next up inside of the bin folder, we have a bunch of programs to help us compile and make our games. First up is the super awesome Playdate simulator that can run Playdate games directly inside of your Mac or Windows computer. Next we have a font creation tool that will help you create pixely fonts for your different video games. Our last items help us compile Playdate games. The first two are command line tools, and the last one will help us if we want to use the Nova Editor. The final thing I want to highlight is the examples folder. Inside of here you'll find the source code for a few different cool games and examples already pre-made for the Playdate. Now let's move on to the project setup. Let's start by setting up a games folder inside of the main SDK directory. Now, inside of this folder is where we'll make each of our project setups. Let's create a first project folder called Hello World. Finally, inside of this folder is where we'll put the actual source code for our game. Let's get started on this by opening up your favorite code editor. This could be something simple like Notepad, but in this case I'm using Visual Studio Code from Microsoft. Whatever you pick to use, start by making a new file and saving it in the directory that we just created. Be sure to name the file main.lua. Once you have all that completed, let's move on to actually coding. Yay! Start by typing import core libs slash graphics. Then let's set up a constant set to playdate.graphics. Both of these lines together will import our graphics library that does a lot of the drawing for us, and it allows it to be saved to a nice, neat, small named variable to use later. Next, type out these two lines to define the main game loop update function. Then, inside of that function, type gfx fill ret 10 10 10. 
What this will do, we'll use that graphics library to draw a square at the position 10x, 10y, with a width of 10 and a height of 10. I'm glad you know how to draw a square now, but how do we actually compile this so it runs on the play date? I'm glad you asked. First, we need to open up a terminal and the SDK folder. Now, I want you to type CD into terminal and then drag the games folder over to it, and you'll see that pastes the path of the games folder in there for us. Now, when we hit enter, we're going to use the CD command to change our directory to that games folder. Once we are inside of our main games folder, we're ready to compile the source code for our Hello World game. To do that, we're going to use the PDC command. Type PDC, followed by the name of our folder, which in this case is Hello World, and lastly, you're going to type the name of the export file you want to export it to, which is going to be, in this instance, Hello World.pdx. And after you hit enter, it'll take a second, but you'll see a new file appear named Hello World.pdx. Now we can right click and run this in the Playdate simulator. Look at that, our pixel appeared! Not very exciting yet, so let's add some more code. Back in the code editor, let's add two new variables. We're going to name one pause x and one pause y. We'll set both of these to zero to begin with. These will store local x and y positions for our square. Then, inside of the update, we are going to go ahead and make both pause x and pause y increment by one each frame. Next, instead of using a hard-coded value of 10, 10 for the x and y position of our square, we're going to use the pause x and pause y variables. That way, the position will actually change with each update. If we save those changes and run our PDC update command again inside of Terminal, it will rebuild our game file and allow us to run the new code in the Playdate simulator. Voila! Our cube now updates each frame. But you might notice that it has a trailing position instead of clearing. Let's go ahead and fix that now. Back in our game code, we are going to add one line of code at the beginning of the update function to clear the screen. This is going to be gfx.clear. Pretty simple, right? This command simply clears the data from the previous frame before we start drawing our next one. Once more, compile the game, and now you'll see that our cube moves without a trail. Success! Now, let's move on to how to put that game build onto the physical Playdate unit itself. To do this, we first need to plug the physical Playdate unit into the computer via the USB cable. Next, open the game file in the Playdate emulator. Then, find the serial number at the kind of middle bottom right of that emulator. Click it, and then select Upload Game to Device. Now, this will load for a minute, and then the play date will kind of show a status update, and then it will kind of do a refresh, and your game will now be available on the play date main menu in the device itself. Now, as promised, I'm going to show the Windows side of things, too. To get things started, here's the installation process that you can expect on a Windows environment. When the Playdate installer is finished, you will be able to close it, and then you can notice that there is a Playdate Simulator shortcut added to your desktop. If you click on this, it opens up the familiar Playdate Simulator that was the same on the Macintosh. Now I want to take a moment to show you how to view the Playdate files on your Windows computer. First, start in the C drive, then go to Programs x86, and then go to Playdate, and there are all your important files. Just like on the Mac, let's go one level up and then right click and create a shortcut on the desktop to this folder. Now, I want to take a second to point out that instead of making the games folder inside of the Playdate files, I found that on Windows it's better to make it somewhere like on your desktop. And this is simply because Windows has more permission issues if you're going to make it inside of the Playdate file folder instead of on a place like the desktop. With that out of the way, you'll see that we have the same Hello World source code here. Except, I've had to comment out this one line at the top, and this is because I couldn't get Windows to build if this line was included, so go ahead and remove this if you're a Windows user. 
The next thing I want to point out is that to build this properly on Windows, I had to create this little batch script to help us. And a quick note, this and all the other source code from this video will be available in a GitHub link in the description. Now, I won't take time to explain everything that this script does, but I do want to explain one thing. You see these first two parts where it says hello world? The first one is the folder name, and the second one is the output name, just like the Mac command. So if you're changing the project name or building a different project on your own, be sure to fix these in the batch file as well. All of that to say, to build on Windows, we simply need to double click the batch script. Then, you'll see that it outputted this folder looking file. But to run it, all we need to do is open the Playdate simulator and then click on File, Open, and then just select our folder that was just outputted. Voila! Our game now runs on the Windows Playdate simulator. When you're ready to run the game on your actual device, just click on the device from the file menu, then click on Install Game to Device, and then just browse to the same folder that we selected previously. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Please comment below if you have any questions or concerns, and why not subscribe if you're not already. Have a good day!